See, I told you, reefing ain't easy. Now you gotta deal with cyanobacteria. But don't worry, it's not that bad. I'm gonna educate you on it today, tell you how to get rid of it. But first, let's address the title of this video. The truth, what's the truth about cyanobacteria? The truth is, it's a bit of a mystery. Now, if you don't believe me, do this. Look at your five most credible sources for reefing, you know, like whatever institute, doctor, whatever you look at. And when they talk about nutrients and cyanobacteria, see what they say about it. And I bet you they're gonna have opposite conflicting views. You know, one half is saying, oh, if you have cyanobacteria, it's because you don't have any nutrients, you're, you're too low on nitrates and phosphates. And then the other half is gonna tell you, oh, you need to lower your nitrates and phosphates, you have too many nutrients, that's why you have cyanobacteria. So what the heck's going on? They both can't be right. I'm gonna come back to that, but first let's address some stuff that we definitely do know about cyanobacteria. Let's talk about flow. That's actually one of the most important things when it comes to cyanobacteria. If you're out in the wilderness, you know, a good survival tactic is when you go to drink water that just exists out in the wilderness, drink from fast moving water, not still water. <clears throat> and the reason they say that is because moving water is less likely to have bacteria and things that can hurt you versus like a still pond is gonna be flourished with giardia and different kinds of bacteria. The same is true in your fish tank. You know, one silver lining of having cyanobacteria is it's going to show you where the least amount of flow is in your tank. Now, if you don't have a bare bottom tank, it's normally gonna show up on the sand because you can't blast the sand with flow because you'll get a dust storm everywhere and nobody wants that. But you'll also notice it to start to appear on rocks. So if you never wanna have cyanobacteria, a really good thing you can do is have adequate flow, enough flow throughout your entire tank to never really give it the environment to have a little bit turn into a lot. By having enough flow, it never really has a chance to develop. But once you have it and it starts to grow, it can actually do decent in some pretty well flowed areas. But there's other things that contribute to cyanobacteria. Let's talk about the next thing, which is light. Now, cyanobacteria is photosynthetic, meaning it can take light and use that as energy to survive. And there's two things with lighting that can help or hurt cyanobacteria. One is the length of time your lights are on. If you have your lights on 24 hours a day, the cyanobacteria is gonna be loving life, it's gonna thrive. Obviously, you're not gonna do that, but even going from 12 hours a day to nine hours a day can have a pretty big impact on your cyanobacteria problem. Now, the other thing is actually the spectrum of light that cyanobacteria thrives off of. Now, there is a pretty wide spectrum that it can use to turn light into energy. However, it's that yellow, red, that orange is where it really, really thrives. So having primarily blue light is definitely gonna decrease the likelihood of cyanobacteria showing up and taking off in your tank. It doesn't mean it'll eliminate it, but you'll probably hear methods of like doing a blackout, not having lights on it for a couple days, or if you have the lighting infrastructure that allows you to adjust specific spectrums, maybe for a little bit you turn down the yellow and the red spectrum and primarily have blue to see if that helps a little bit. But there's two big things, in my opinion, that you might not be thinking about with light that could be contributing to your cyanobacteria problem. One is natural sunlight. So if you're blasting these lights on it and it's next to a window and getting sunlight, there's a good chance you're gonna have cyanobacteria and that sunlight is going to give it the spectrum it really needs, especially in salt water. Because if you think about it, where most of this stuff is in the ocean, it's down into the water. And the red light, that spectrum, is the first to go as it has to penetrate the water. The blue light is what gets down into the water. So you're already blasting it with your own lights, plus you're getting the window light. Get it away from the window, that is one thing that could really help. Another thing that I really think contributed to my cyanobacteria the first time that I saw it and had it, was I put daylight bulbs in my office, thinking it'll make me more productive than the traditional incandescent yellow color bulbs. And daylight bulbs, in my opinion, swap them out. If you have daylight bulbs in the room with your reef tank and you have a cyanobacteria, switch them out to your traditional more yellow-ish light. That's it for light, time on, spectrum. You can try to adjust those things to help with your cyanobacteria problem. Now let's go back to nutrients and then we're gonna talk about the solutions with cyanobacteria and how to actually solve it and figure out how to get rid of it from your fish tank. So back to the nutrients problem. Cyanobacteria is gonna use three things really well to survive and that is light, nitrate, and phosphate. 
So that's why you hear, hey, lower your nitrate and phosphate to help get rid of the cyanobacteria because it does use it as a food source. That's why you hear black out your tank for three days to get rid of your cyanobacteria because it uses that as a food source. So where does this whole ultra low nutrients causes cyanobacteria to come into play? I'll put a link in the description. It's that Dr. Tim guy, you know, the guy that makes these products. And he was doing a talk and he confirmed a suspicion I had. I was thinking if you have really low nitrates, you're gonna have cyanobacteria. I think that's the main reason why I have cyanobacteria. And here's what happens is when you lower your nitrates to let's just say zero, other forms of algae, bacteria, things that can colonize your tank are gonna die off because they don't have the proper nutrition to live. When you have a blank slate and your tank isn't really colonized by other things, it's easy for cyanobacteria to explode and take over. Now, the trick that cyanobacteria does is it gets its nitrogen from the air. So there could be zero nitrates in your tank, but it's still gonna have plenty of nitrogen because it's getting it from the air. And that is something that other life forms like algae cannot do. So you're actually making it easier for cyanobacteria to thrive when you have zero nitrates. And that's because let's just say you have this space, right? This little space and it's full of algae. Cyanobacteria is not gonna be able to take over that area because you know it has to outcompete the algae and the algae's already got a strong foothold. But you eliminate the nitrates, now the algae's dying, it can't live, it has no nitrates, but the cyanobacteria has got everything it needs because it's getting the nitrates from the air, it's gonna take over. So that's why you have that conflicting thing where people are saying, no, lower your nutrients, no, higher your nutrients, and really, you gotta find a balance, and that's why reefing ain't easy. All right, so now let's get to the fun part. How in the heck are you gonna get rid of this and keep it from ever coming back? There's two ways to do it, and I think you should actually use them together. So let's just get the cat out of the bag. Chemi Clean, or another product that's pretty much the same thing, gonna do the same thing as this guy. That will get rid of the cyanobacteria in your tank. If you follow the instructions, you do it right, you make sure you have enough aeration in your tank so that oxygen levels stay up. As far as I know, it's completely safe. It doesn't kill any coral. It's a 48 hour treatment. And you know, I'm sure you've heard the phrase, you gotta be patient, nothing in reefing happens quick. That's true, except for ChemiClean. This stuff happens really fast. I'm talking two full days, all the cyanobacteria will be gone, as long as you use it the way you're supposed to. Maybe you have an extreme case of cyanobacteria and you have to do it twice, but I guarantee it, this stuff will absolutely work for you. Now, I know there's the whole thought that like, well, that's not really a fix, that's just gonna temporarily help and then it's gonna come back. So you really shouldn't even do that. You should get to the source of the problem, solve it that way, and that's gonna be the better, more natural way. And the response I have to that is, there's some truth to that, but think about it, if you do this, and you do the other method, you're going to not only get rid of your cyanobacteria, but keep it from ever coming back. Now, the other natural way might take months and months, and maybe it isn't working, and maybe it's because it's not cyanobacteria, maybe it's dinoflagellants or something, but if you use this stuff, you can definitely identify that was for sure 100% cyanobacteria. Something that a lot of people don't realize, cyanobacteria can actually be green. You know, in, in saltwater aquariums, it's normally red in fresh water it's a lot of times green i actually had green cyanobacteria in my tank and sometimes it's hard to identify this stuff you know dinoflagellants is kind of slimy brownish has some bubbles but cyanobacteria can look a lot like that as well and you're not sure which one you have this one is going to help identify it and the second thing is it's not the best thing for cyanobacteria to be in your tank so you can just get rid of it also make changes and then wait and if it comes back the changes you made didn't work and if it doesn't come back the changes you made did work but maybe the changes you made were just enough to make it so that no new cyanobacteria happens but if you just did that and you already have cyanobacteria then it's just going to stay the same and you're like oh it's not working but if you get rid of it and now new new cyanobacteria can happen you're good so that's why i think you should do this and the whole natural thing i mean okay we've got this glass box and I've got salt water in it. You know, I'm thousands of miles away from any ocean. I've got these electric power heads with magnets. I'm dosing alkalinity, calcium. Nothing about this is natural, nothing. So I just don't think that that's really an argument other than it could hurt something if it is unnatural, like hurt your expensive corals that you like to show off because they're a nice showpiece. Okay, so you're gonna put the chemi clean in and then you need to address the other issues I talked about and in my opinion, go ahead and see if you can address all five. So check your lighting, 
Do you have your lights on like 16 hours a day? That's probably too much. Reduce it down to 12. Maybe it is on 12 hours a day and you got a full blast. Maybe have it ramp up and ramp down at the end so it's not as intense. If you have the ability to adjust the spectrum of your light because they're LEDs, maybe tinker with it and get that red and yellow spectrum down a little bit and see if that helps. Your flow, check your flow. Where did cyanobacteria form? Can you adjust the power head so that that area no longer has a lack of flow? Maybe you just don't have enough power heads and you need to go out and buy a new one. Nutrients, make sure you don't have zero nitrates. Anything but zero should be good. Don't have them way huge high, that's gonna make algae and all kinds of other nuisance life forms thrive, but don't have zero nitrates. With nutrients, the big thing, other than like where they're actually at, just keep them stable. When they have a wild fluctuation, it's gonna be an opportunity time for nuisance life forms to get into your tank, thrive, and take off. Now, two other ways to help with cyanobacteria. One is a UV sterilizer, and a UV sterilizer, in my opinion, is extremely difficult to install correctly and actually have it work for cyanobacteria. It'll definitely help. It'll be a contributor. So maybe you added more flow, you reduced your light schedule, and you put on a UV sterilizer. Those things in trifecta working together should really help with the cyanobacteria, but to just have the UV sterilizer do it on its own, first you have to make sure you get the right size of sterilizer. Second, you have to make sure you install it in a proper closed loop. And third, you have to make sure you have adequate flow, which is extremely hard to do. Most of these pumps for aquariums lose a ton of flow due to head pressure. You almost have to have an external pump to do it as intended. And so again, using that on its own probably isn't the best, but using these things in conjunction should help. Now, the last thing I'll talk about that actually does help with cyanobacteria is other forms of bacteria, not just the nutrifying stuff that lives in your rock, stuff that's free floating in the water column, and maybe it's a more natural way that you'd prefer, is you can Google the regime, but you're gonna be basically dosing this refresh guy from Dr. Tim's. You're gonna turn off your skimmer, turn off your UV, let the let this bacteria go out there, start to colonize, and basically eat a bunch of the cyanobacteria. Then this stuff starts taking off, so then you dose this stuff, and this stuff's gonna eat this stuff, and then eventually be picked out by your skimmer, and you kind of repeat this process. I think you dose this one two or three times over like seven to 10 days. Then you dose this guy, and then you might need to repeat and stuff, and it does help with cyanobacteria. Maybe when you have the cyanobacteria completely gone, maybe just a little bit of this each week, a little bit of this each week, not the full dosage amount, but just enough to have other bacteria floating in your water column that's colonized your tank that makes it so that cyanobacteria can't infiltrate, can't get in because it's got other bigger, badder, better organisms that also help your tank in the way of it from getting in your tank and hurting. So long story short, I hope that helped you. If you have a big cyanobacteria problem, this is what I'd do. Throw some ChemiClean in there, look at the things I just talked about, see if anywhere you can make adjustments, make an adjustment to some of them, and then wait and see. Did it work, did it not work? If the cyanobacteria comes back, what you did did not work. So don't do the same thing over again and expect a different result. Do it again, but this time make different changes until eventually the changes you make are gonna work and your cyanobacteria is gonna be gone and never come back. We all know, reefing ain't easy, but I hope this video helped you out today, made it a little bit easier for you. Thanks for watching, see you next time.